Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look at this new product that has just been released from Runcam this week. Now this is the latest version of their Runcam split. Um, interestingly, they're not calling it the split, they're calling it the Runcam hybrid. Now this is picking up on some design cues from other camera manufacturers where rather than have one lens that does two jobs of providing the FPV footage and also providing the image for the HD recording, they've actually split those two lenses apart. So one of the lenses can be dedicated for FPV, provide a really low latency FPV image, and the other one then can be dedicated to giving a really nice HD image that can be recorded onto an SD card. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you will know that the split has had lots of different versions. I think I've had pretty much every one of them in here. I like the split and I use it a lot. I also like the old run cam box cameras. They occasionally still get used on models here. But for those models where weight is an issue or you don't have the room, having something like a split is great. You can dump the action camera and you can still record in HD. Now, things like the split and the new run cam hybrid don't have things like stabilization technology and those kind of things that some of the high end action cameras do, but you can still get a very nice image. So while I unbox this one, let me just go through some specs. So this new hybrid has a HD field of view of 145 degrees, capable of recording up to 4K, 30 frames a second, uh, but we'll do lots of different versions of 1080p and 720 as well. Uh, 1080p, I think the maximum frame rate is 120 frames per second, which will give beautiful crisp images if you're recording racing footage. Single board design, 20 millimeter mounting holes, all glass lens construction in the HD camera. The HD camera is the bigger one of the two in the camera array. And it's a Sony sensor which should give a better image. The lower camera that seems to be dedicated for FPV appears to be a run cam racer or something very similar. The latency is the same and the menu that I'll show you in a minute is pretty much the same as well. Big changes here appear to be on the board itself. Now, earlier versions of the split had either uh, inbuilt Wi-Fi or Bluetooth that you could connect to an app to start and stop recording. And you also had the benefit of being able to start and stop it automatically in different settings too. Now, this one has a number of ways that you can control the modes and the stopping and starting of recording. So you can connect the transmit and receive pins that are on here to a flight controller running something like beta flight and configure that to run. However, most of the time I tend to just set it up to auto start recording. So it starts recording as soon as I install the battery and that way I don't miss a thing. If you solder on the connector for a joystick, you can access and configure it in a very conventional way, just like you would with any other run cam camera. But the menu that you can access is really all about the FPV camera itself, rather than the entire system. To set up the recording mode and how you want everything to run, the exposure and all that stuff, you have to use a little application on your tablet or phone. Very similar to the Runcam 5 that I looked at a couple of months ago, where what you do is you decide how you want it to work, you then hit go, a QR code appears on the screen by holding the mode button until the LED goes green, you point the camera at that QR code, once it's red and configured it, then that LED goes back to blue. And by using something like the SpeedyB app, you can also upgrade the camera, uh, the FPV camera's firmware as well, which is a really nice touch. Voltage to run this thing is very similar to the other splits, so anything between 5 and 20 volts. However, there is a note in the documentation to say non-direct power supply from 4S battery or above, powered directly with battery will generate surges and burn the camera. And all that's really talking about is the voltage spikes that you get on modern high-performance quadcopters in particular will not do the Runcam hybrid any good at all. I'd personally recommend getting yourself a little separate BEC to run it. Uh, nine volts is what I've been playing with here. Just pop one of those and run the power supply separately. That also means that the power supply is super clean and that will also reduce noise in your FPV footage as well as make sure the HD recording is flawless as well. 
Working current is still at the levels that the previous camera had, so it's about 480 milliamps if you're running it at 5 volts. Uh, that's usually at the upper scale of what most internal 5 volt battery eliminator circuits in flight controllers will run. Or if you're running it at something that like 12 volts, which is actually probably a better voltage, 9 or 12 volts would be my recommendation for this. It's around about the 140 milliamps at 12 volts and probably closer to 200 at 9 volts. And to get a battery eliminator circuit on a flight controller that will put out 9 volts and easily support 200 milliamps is a lot easier. Check out things like my latest builds with the Maytek flight controllers, particularly the wing ones that have an awful lot of power to do exactly that. So let me show you some footage. I'm not recording this in the highest setting just because the YouTube compression and the way it's rendered and stuff at this end, uh, you lose a lot of that fidelity. So it isn't a perfect example of what it looks like. The main image here is a 1080p 30 frame per second and the insert is the corresponding view that I'm getting in my goggles recorded in my Fatshark HDOs with the DVR. This is a very overcast, gloomy morning, uh, probably the first day that I've been able to kind of get outside and get some more footage. And you can see how it's coping with the contrast, with the color, with the saturation. And surprise, surprise, uh, Runcam have been doing this a very long time. It's doing a really nice job. So while this footage plays, let me just talk about my initial impressions. This is another great evolution of the split family. I like the idea that we have the two cameras now, one dedicated for HD recording and one dedicated for a low latency FPV feed. That means that we get the best of both worlds rather than trying to get both things out of one camera. And I do like the quality of the image and I like the way you can still access everything through a regular joystick if you want to. Lots of ways to control this. You can either do the joystick like I did in the demo. We've got things like the QR code on a phone or tablet that you have at the field. Most of us are going to have that in our back pocket, so that's not a big deal. And you can also do the UART control with Betaflight, again, all covered in the manual. To be honest, with these kind of things, if you're like me, you tend to find the setting that you like and you just kind of leave it like that. I like the auto start and auto stop recording because then you kind of just don't have to worry about it. At the end of the day's flying, you just pop the SD card out of the split and you can download the footage and it's all there. And I like the fact by default it's set to auto record, which is how I like it. A couple of things to be aware of though. First of all is that this new camera is a little bit bigger, a little bit taller than the standard cameras that you get from people like Runcam. Uh, so you do need to find a little bit more space and the cable comes out of the top. So installing it in something like a wing, that slightly delicate cable potentially could be in a place where it's going to get caught. The power usage at 5 volts to run this is going to be about half an amp, so make sure that your battery eliminator circuit is going to handle it. Personally, I would recommend installing a separate one, just so it only has to worry about running the split and you get a perfect image. I think having some more voltage regulation on the split itself would be really good, so that you could run it directly from the battery voltage without having to worry about voltage spikes causing problems. There isn't a cable to plug the joystick into or a joystick inside the box. So I had to find a joystick cable in my bucket of wires and solder that on. And I think that should be included for those of us that want to pop it in something where a spare UART isn't available or camera control isn't there on the flight controller. But I do get the feeling that this is very much aimed at those of us that fly with flight controllers because the UART control and also the ability to then upgrade the firmware over that UART in things like Betaflight and the SpeedyB app definitely make it feel that way. Don't forget you're going to have to download the Runcan app to modify the HD recording settings via the QR code. But if you've been waiting for a camera like this from Runcam, where we have multiple cameras doing different things that are dedicated, the hybrid is here. In the testing that I've done here, it's worked flawlessly and I've been impressed. I have a number of smaller wings here that at the moment I'm trying to figure out how to fit it into. Because at the moment when I fly those wings, I don't get the ability to capture any HD footage from the flight and I'd really like to. But it does require a little bit of thought to kind of squeeze it in there. In something like a larger wing or a regular sized quadcopter, this would be a relatively easy fit. So long as you have a spare UART on your flight controller and you have a power supply that can handle the current to run it.
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.